Hello folks. Well, Sunday's supposed to be a day of rest, but we've been busy as you know, visiting mother every day up in the hospital. She's now home. She's got a few problems which we're, we're having, having to look after, but today is Sunday and I need to get on top of the garden. It's totally overgrown, so I've got to do some gardening. There we go. Grass is now cut. God knows how many times I had to uh, empty the container because the grass was literally in places. It was about that long. Trouble is now, I've now developed another problem. I went to just pull start the mower and the top cover's come loose. So before I do anything else, I'm quickly going to repair that. And then I'm going to have to start tackling these weeds here. But as you can see, this is around the pond area. And this is the area which I'll need to actually totally clear, which is going to become the fruit garden. And these weeds, I mean, I've cut these level before and that's not the way to deal with them. That's just a short term solution. What you've got to do basically is pull these out by the roots, clear the area and possibly put some sort of membrane down there as well to um, stop things growing underneath and then dig it over. So. There's literally loads as you can see to do here. But first of all, as you can see, I went to pull the pool cord and this whole thing's come up, which means the oil dipsticks come out. And I literally had realized that I've had oil spilling out here. And I just topped it up before I started. So obviously there's a, a bolt loose there, which I can actually see. And I think it's the actual casing that's broken down there. So I'm gonna have to put a different casing on that just to get over this little problem. Right, every now and again, you gotta renew your own equipment. So. I'm going to remove this cover now and if I've got an old temporary one I'm going to put on there just so that we can cut our grass. I should have one laying about so I'm going to have to get on with this. Right I just fixed that lawnmower you didn't need to see that you've seen me do loads of them. Here we are at the front now Sharon as you know broke down in a, a Mondeo this week and it uh, was picked up by the AA and they said that the thermostat had gone because it overheat, it was overheating basically. So rather than do the job on the side of the road, which I think is quite an involved job on this, uh, they decided to tow her home. So I went out and bought a new thermostat. So now's the time to fit it. So initially the thermostat apparently is under here somewhere. I've got to get to the uh, front of the engine, which is this end, because it's a front wheel drive. So I've got to take this cover off. I think this just pulls up and clips off, so which is handy. Cut the cables over there. Cut the hoses that are connected. Just got to pull out there. And that should come up. There we go. That's just the top cover off. The front of the engine, which is here, apparently the, f the thermostat lives under here somewhere. So this is a power steering pump, which has apparently got to be removed. I'll be looking at that. There's two hoses that connect to it, apparently. So one's a big hose, which I can probably see down there. I can see that one there and then there's a smaller one which comes off of it so I'll have to obviously start stripping this down right apparently the first job is to remove the front grille by literally undoing these two plastic clips and this grille should uh, pop out apparently Let's slide back forward oh there we go that comes forward so two top screw clips and the grille pulls forward so that's that first stage right now we've got to take off the connector at the back of the headlight and that's done by there's a little clip on that uh, look. push 
push that in. Oh, so you push the clip in, and that pulls off. The connector pulls off. Right, okay, so that's the clip off the headlight. See, on our one, I think if we lift this pin out, pull that pin out like that, then that should release. There we go. A whole lot. And this apparently should pull out now. There's another one of these pins here, look. I wonder if you've got to pull it out as well. Maybe you do. Let's pull it out anyway. Look, just pull that top one out there. And then see what happens. Oh, here we go, yeah. Oh, it caught my finger. Then that just pulls out. There you go. And this is what we're looking at. Right, well, yeah, I can see the thermostat housing. It's actually behind the pipe work behind this pipe work which you can't really see but this big hose here goes onto it and it's right behind that power steering pipe work so I think the power steering pump's going to have to come off right as you can probably see there now getting this clip off here or compressing this clip is absolutely ridiculous I managed to get it though but as you can see I've pulled that that's the bottom hose off and it's out of the way now and you're obscured by this bracket here which is for the power steering pump. Now all I managed to do there is just undo the bolt there and just lever it sort of to one side to give me a little bit more flexibility on that but that's all I've really got there. There is one more pipe on. If I just get that torch and shine it at the back there. Where is it? You can see in there, there's the clip for it there. So I've got to get the pliers in there somehow and then pull this other little pipe off there so I'm not going to be able to hold the camera there to do that so you're just going to have to take my word for it that that's what I've got to do and I'll let you know how hard it was it looks very difficult see it? Cool to it. right just to show you that I've actually pulled this out I've left that hose connected that first big the, the little hose as you can see because I couldn't actually wiggle it off in there I've had to undo the electrical connector which is a blink awkward job in there and that's enabled me to pull this out as you can see the thermostat housing now and all I've got to do now is to Wiggle the pipe, yeah. and there, there it is. I've actually got it off without removing the pump above it or anything. So I'm not saying it's going to be easy to get the old one back on, but uh, I'll just hold it up with the old one, with the new one there. It's exactly the same, but the thing is now, hopefully, putting it back together should be a bit easier than actually removing it. That's the theory, anyway. So, here's the back side of the old and the new ones. The new pattern one I've got has actually got a compression type of O ring on it. This one seems to have uh, all flattened off, and the actual rubbish and crap in there that's probably what's been stopping it from opening. So. Anyway, I'm going to try and fit this now, and I'll show you at the end uh, as to how easy it was. But as you can see, I'm actually covered in muck. I've got little greys on my arm because the hardest thing is that you trying to work in this little area here and getting you undoing the nuts with a little six mil. There's only three nuts, but you have to sort of have a tool like that to get on there and there's two nuts at the top which are these two which are pretty okay to get to and then there's one at the back there as you can see underneath which you have to sort of fiddle in between here and through here and undo I didn't take them right out it enabled me to get enough pull to release that and then the electrical connection you have to press the top and bottom I've done it with a pair of grips and that just pulls off and that enabled me to then wiggle this out through that entrance there with that pipe still on so as I say because I couldn't get that clip off with that in situ so that's what you're going to come up against you on? yep right so I've put this clip back on in this position and that's gone on a piece of cake so that was pretty easy to do there I'm not going to plug the electrical connection on yet I'm going to try and manoeuvre this now into place which could be a bit tricky so I'm going to try and do it from above pull the pipe work down wiggle it in there 
Right, I'm making sure that the gasket is still in place, which it is. Now, I've not put it in yet, but I'm just making sure that everything's pretty much where it needs to be. So all I'm going to do now is concentrate on getting the screws in. Right, thermostat is now in, that's the three bolts, two bolts at the top and the one underneath. Without that tool, or a similar length, you'll be knackered, because it's got to fit between here and the radiator and stuff, and that apparently seems to be just the right length. How we done it, we sort of put it in place, don't forget we had that little top hose on, and we haven't got the connector on yet, or the big hose, but we put one of the screws in there, and then wiggled through here, and was able to twist this to do one of them up by hand. We then went to the other side and done exactly the same, and done that up by hand, and then we put the bottom screw in exactly using the same method. When they was all hand tight and we couldn't turn that anymore, we changed over and put the ratchet on, and then we was able to nip the three bolts up all to the same tension, and that's the stage we're at at the moment. So if we look in here now, there's the, uh, although it looks very awkward and tight in there, we have managed to do it. There's two bolts at the top, there's the big hose still got to go on, and the other side, which you just can't see, is the electrical connector, which I've also just got to slide that on now. So the only problem I foresee is getting this hose here, with this clip, back onto that bottom pipe there, and compressing the clip. That's the last part of the job now. I'm going to see how awkward this is. As you can see, by the state of my hands, a few scuff marks up my arm there, be prepared for that, and this is doing it without actually taking the uh, power steering pump out the big belt that goes around the power steering pump your water pump belt and all that that's, that's all stayed in situ so you can actually do these thermostats in it I suppose at the moment it's probably taken us 45 minutes to get to this stage although you've seen the edited version obviously so realistically you can do this sort of job and I'm now going to try and tackle and put that pipe on and I'll let you know afterwards how hard it is to get that done so that's where we're going now well that clip was a right pain the only way I could get anything on it was with pointed nose pliers to compress the actual clip itself and you can only push it on so far from this angle you have to stand up feed your hand underneath it and sort of wiggle top and bottom to get the clip over that initial uh, bezel which it has to go over before it seats correctly. That is on now, everything's back in. Also remember with these engines, if you just put water in this, it's not good enough coolant and you'll find that the car will overheat. So don't think just topping it up and then giving it a try will uh, sort you out. If it's warm outside like it is today, the car will start to overheat. You have to have the uh, pre-mix coolant in there all year round and that aids in the engine cooling. So. We're going to top the system up now and then give it a try. Put the cover back on here. I managed to get the electrical connection back on. Again, you're doing that blind, and I did that from the top here. Literally, putting my hand down here, feeling the connector, and it literally just pushes straight on. I took a few attempts, but that's how I've done that. So we're just going to put the headlight back in now. You haven't really got to see that. And put the cover on, top up with coolant, and then we'll give it a test run. Right, okay, we've filled the Mondeo up, we've got all the air out of the system now, we've drove it round, everything's as per it should be, and we've got a lovely warm heater as well, so this is the old thermostat, as you can probably see there, I don't think you can get any, I can't get near to that, it's actually well gummed up in there, yeah, I don't think you can see inside there, look at the state of that inside, look, so obviously this is a problem, the AA man uh, diagnosis was correct and as you can see look at all that rubbish in there look so this was it that's how it goes in that way round the two top bolts and the one bottom bolt and literally poof pull it out but we had to take this big hose off first and getting that clip off was quite awkward we left this top one on until we'd actually wiggled it out and that connector we just uh, disconnected when once we loosened it off and got the three bolts out so there we go that's bank holiday Monday for you it's um we're going to go out now and have something to eat, make the most of this bank holiday. And uh, I'll just show you quickly around the garden because we've had some developments 
in the uh, garden. Let's show you. Here's our um, asters. They've taken to these new pots very nicely now, as you can see. These were the little ones in the little seed trays that was in the garden there. And look at our cabbages, how they're coming on. Look, coming through there. Look, they're starting to develop now, and the leaves are getting bigger and bigger, as are the beetroots and the external carrots, which Sharon transplanted. Now, we actually went to a garden centre and we bought a tray of these, basically celery. We only paid £2.25 for them. It just gives us a little head start there on, on growing these, so we're going to plant these obviously. That just gives us a little head start. And we've had to purchase some broccoli. Again, only £2.25 for these seedlings. We're going to be planting these, and let's go have a look at our broccoli, just to see what our broccoli's doing. Now, we did have a comment on um, one of my videos about someone saying there's a very good chance that our broccoli would turn to flour and actually that's what's happened so let's show you here is our broccoli look absolutely done what that person said I can't remember who it was now and it's turned to flour and we're doing a, we've done a bit more investigation what you can do apparently is chop the heads off and let them grow but also I think it's too warm in here for the, the broccoli so this should have been outside not only that as you can probably see there it's well overgrown now so what we're going to try and do, we're going to try and chop back, we're going to pull out all the little roots in there and we're going to chop off all these top heads where the flowering heads are and we're just going to try and minimise the, what we've got in there just to see what happens. We're not expecting anything now, it just saves us digging it all out and starting afresh and that's why we've brought them other broccoli plants because we're actually going to put them in possibly these tubs here, I've got three of these large tubs, maybe two or even maybe three per tub and we're going to actually stand them outside, so I think they're hard enough to go outside. The idea there, obviously, is to keep them out of this intense heat. I don't think that that, 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 that is our problem anyway. I mean, these are our asters. Oh no, these are the candy tuft here, as you can probably see. Again, they've taken very nicely and they're really shooting up now since we've transplanted them. That is a lettuce there, believe it or not, as I've shown you before, in, our, um, in one of the plants we've grown. Potatoes are doing well. I mean, look at the lettuce. This is really growing now, this lettuce. Absolutely unbelievable. And as I say, we're, we're, I think I'm very near to planting the peas out now. I think I can let them go a little bit larger. But look at our tomatoes now, look. These come on, look, all of a sudden, and the reason being, and even the, um, the uh, courgettes here, and the pumpkins, look how quickly these have actually come on and grown. And the reason why, is that Sharon introduced some uh, liquid feed into them and literally overnight they really did develop overnight the strawberries as you can see there are nicely coming along now but I'm really pleased with the way that these tomato plants have come on now and the sweet corn at the back there which is baby sweet corn they've uh, picked up nicely now as you can see the stems are coming lovely and thick now as well so we're we're really getting well and I'm under the impression that um, that we got to um, find when when these flowers, these courgettes, for example, we got to look for the male and the female, and just get a little paintbrush and get the uh, pollen off of one and transplant it into the other to pollinate them. So that's what we're looking for there. Sharon's replanted this one here with peppers, so yes, yeah, coming up well. But I mean, it's so lush in here now; it really is lush. And again, probably planted them. Uh, onions there too near to each other but can't do nothing about it now so we're just gonna see how they go I suppose I could have transplanted them out but I'm not too sure I've never done it before there's a little pollinator there look where is he little bee little bumblebee there look sitting up there they're allowed in here all the time so plenty of them to uh, want needed in there so that's the polytunnel really really growing well now all these weeds here around the pond all around this area here and around this side, I've actually sprayed all these with a. Oh, the old pigeon there, look, we always feed the pigeons there. I've actually sprayed all these with um, a weed killer. I don't hold too much for it because it was just the local stuff bought at a local garden centre. And to my opinion, these don't have the potency what they once, to, uh, once used to have. For example, nitromores, for example, I used some nitromores uh, a few weeks back on. No, it's a few months back actually. 
and it didn't touch uh, the, 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 the surface which I was trying to get it get cleaned off with it and apparently it's no longer as strong as what it used to be due to EU rules and regulations so I would imagine the same with a weed killer unless you go, go for a professional weed killer which you probably can't buy over the counter so I'm not holding that much hope. Failing that, I can see me having to get my gloves on and literally take these things by the roots and actually pull them all the way out and then cut them down and once they get down to the ground level like this, literally get a, a fork in here and turn all this earth over and pull these well established roots out. So that's the only real way I can see of getting rid of all this. But that's a bit later on. I managed to cut the grass the other day with the lawnmower. As I said, you, you saw me um, have a problem with the lawnmower at the start of the video, which is now sorted. Well, here we go then. Last little bit. I just want to put this into the video uh, about our little friend Austin, who's a Scudo camper, who had some tragic news, which he shared with everybody on YouTube that he'd lost his little dog, Tom, which he's had for 14 years. Uh, just to say, Austin, yes, we're thinking of you. And at this sad time, I'm sure you realise that you've got loads of people thinking about you and also Tarn hasn't gone anyway, Tarn's just gone to a different spirit world, that's all. She's still with you, still going your walks with you, and I'm sure you'll remember all the walks that you did have with her. So yeah, there we go. That's our bank holiday Monday. Fixed the Mondeo, that's all going now. And we're probably gonna put that on the market now and just get rid of it, I don't need it now, I've got the transit van back. Anyway, have a nice bank holiday. Hope you enjoyed this little video. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget, I do like your subscriptions. If you've got a YouTube uh, account, it's easy enough to do and free to do and if you subscribe to our channel or anybody's channel basically whenever we upload a video you'll get a notification via our email that we've uploaded a new video anyway hope you've enjoyed this see you again soon bye bye for now